If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. In part A, we are asked to calculate the electric potential difference between points 1 and 2. And we'll notice that those two points are located within wire C. So for part A, we're going to be focusing our attention on that particular wire. Now we know that the resistance of wire C would equal the resistivity of wire C multiplied by its length and then divided by the cross-sectional area of wire C. The resistivity was given to us in the question as being this value right here. And the length of wire C was also given to us. We can determine the area by noting that the cross-section of wire C would be a circle. And that means that the area of wire C could be replaced with the cross-sectional area of a circle, which of course is pi times radius squared. So we'll fill that expression in for the cross-sectional area. Now, the diameter of wire C was given as opposed to its radius, so we might want to come off on the side and change that diameter into radius. And we know that radius would equal the diameter divided by 2. So we'll take the 1 millimeter, we'll end up dividing it by 2. We also want to make sure that we convert the millimeter into the standard unit of meters, and we know that 1 meter is equivalent to 1,000 millimeters. If we set up our conversion in that manner, the millimeters will cancel out. And we can see that the radius of wire C will be 5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. So with all that information, we can go ahead and plug in to find the resistance of wire C. And when then we work that out on our calculators, we get about 2.55. And let's take a look at the unit. So in the numerator, we have meters times meters, which is meters squared. That will cancel with the meters squared in the denominator. That leaves us with the unit of ohms. So this is the resistance of wire C. Now to find the electric potential difference between points 1 and 2, which again is in wire C, we just note that the potential difference across wire C will equal the current running through C multiplied by the resistance of wire C. Now the current was given to us as being 2 amps. So we can plug that in for the current and then the resistance of course we just determined. When we multiply those values out we get a potential difference of approximately 5.1 volts. So this will be the correct answer to part A. Part B will be very similar. This time it's between points 2 and 3 whose electric potential difference we are trying to figure out. That exists in wire D. The first thing we'll have to do is determine the resistance of wire D, just like we did before for wire C. Note that the diameter and resistivity of wire D are different. They're given to us in the question. And so to find the radius of wire D, we'll take its diameter and divide it by 2. And then we'll also have to convert the millimeters into meters, just like we did before. The millimeters will cancel, and we can see that the radius is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4. That's the radius of wire D. We'll go ahead and plug in all the known information for wire D. And then when we work that out, we get a resistance of approximately 5.09 ohms. The potential difference will therefore be the current multiplied by that resistance. The current, once again, is 2 amps, and then when we multiply these values out, we end up with approximately 10.2 volts. So this is the correct answer for part B of the question. And now for part C, it asks us to determine the rate at which energy is dissipated. That is the same thing as calculating the power. And we need to do that between points 1 and 2. So we're looking for the power dissipated in wire C. And that would equal the current in wire C squared multiplied by the resistance in wire C. Now again, the current is 2 amps. Don't forget to square it. And then we determined the resistance of wire C earlier in the problem. You will recall that that was equal to 2.55 ohms. And so when we work this out, we get roughly 10 watts. And this is the correct answer to part C. And then on to part D, very similar to part C. We'll take the current that's flowing through wire D, square it, and then multiply by the resistance of wire D. The current is 2 amps, and you will recall that the resistance of wire D was about 5.09 ohms. And then when you work this out, you should get approximately 20 watts. So this is the correct answer to part D.